During the last four years, human rights groups and defenders were harassed, defamed, denied access to the media, and legally prosecuted. Many of them were victims of the use of excessive force. Since December 2007, the authorities have staged a crackdown against activists and human rights groups, human rights defenders. They were arrested violently at their houses. They were reportedly subjected to severe torture, including the use of electric shocks, hanging, and sexual abuse. And they are currently facing unfair trial. Finally, excuse me, frontline Pakistan, you have the floor, sir. I just wanted, in the first place, to reiterate what you recalled and requested all the colleagues not to reopen the issues and discussion that we have already concluded in the working group. Our statements are to be focused on the outcome of the process. And I'd like very much to invite you, friendly, to stick to this provision of 5-1, as, as well as of all relevant documents. During the UPR review of Bahrain, an insufficient amount of consideration was given to political and civil rights. In this regard, the Cairo Institute would like to highlight the following. One, the people of Bahrain are un unable to change their government peacefully. Two, the King of Bahrain rules the country with the assistance of his uncle, the Prime Minister, and 12 other members of the royal family as ministers. Distinguished representative of Egypt, you have the floor. Mr. President, I do not need to repeat what was suggested by Pakistan. We are not addressing the human rights situation in Bahrain. We are addressing the outcome. And I am sure that the Secretariat will take the necessary measures to delete any references to this statement in the final outcome, final report, I mean, because this is out of line, Mr. President. And it's against the last explanation you yourself, sir, had just made. Thank you. Statement of the speaker has made a couple of references to the process of the UPR and to the way in which things were analyzed. So, I, to my mind, this is in line with the uh, instructions that have been given. We are not reviewing the human rights situation in Bahrain, and I do not think that there is anything in the recommendations on the way the King of Bahrain is ruling his country. This, is, this was exactly what I interrupted, Mr. President. But I am sorry my delegation cannot agree to that remarks could be made about the human rights situation in the country at large. According to a constitutional amendment created by the King, the King appoints half of the members of the National Assembly. The King also appoints all members of Constitutional Court and all members of the Supreme Judicial Council. On the other hand, Bahraini citizens are denied the right to petition their government. Most recently, the Royal Court has rejected a new petition signed by more than 54,000 citizens calling for... Distinguished President of Egypt, you have a point of order. Mr. President, you have made your statement twice, and I appeal to you, sir, to invoke what you clearly mentioned on Friday evening, that you will insist on limiting the discussion on the outcome. Any reference to anything outside of the outcome should not be tolerated. It is unacceptable that any speaker hears the president and then continues as pre previously premeditated as if the president did not speak. This is unacceptable to my delegation and it doesn't show respect to the council. Thank you. I'm sorry for taking the floor again, but we are setting the norms here. This is the first report to be adopted in the UN history. And I would like to refer all distinguished colleagues to paragraph 4.3 of your presidential statement, Mr. President, in which, in which it reads as follows. A summary of the views expressed on the outcome of the review. It is clear, sir. It is saying on the outcome of the review. So the views here should be limited to the outcome of the review, not just focused to the outcome of the review. I would, I am tempted to consider 
that the remarks that have been made so far fall within the line of recommendations included, included in this chapter of the Working Group Report. This is what I want to submit to your attention. If we are in agreement on this, we shall continue. Sir, distinguished representative of Egypt. Mr. President, I will not argue with your interpretation, but I would like anybody to show me any reference in this recommendations to the way Bahrain is being governed or being ruled by the royal family. Besides, they had the chance in the submissions they submitted in the compilation report. I'm just trying to protect the process. In your mind, if you try to, to force the rule of law, you are against the NGOs. You are trying to muscle the NGOs. We will not be deterred. We follow the rules and we follow the law. And we will continue to make sure that they are enforced. We came to an agreement, and that agreement is to have a situation where a thorough review takes place in the working group. And that when we come to the council plenary, it is to endorse the work and outcome of the working group. In that case, we are not going to engage in double review. If anybody says otherwise, maybe there are certain uh, uh, misunderstandings which we did not clarify. This talking had taken place a long time. And also, all compilations have been done, deposited in the internet for everybody to see. And frankly, we have been frank about the process. Let us take it as we agreed in the working group. We are not trying to silence them, but just to evoke the right rules and regulation for this particular session. They have made a great deal of contribution with respect to not only one NGO, maybe I would say 10 or 20 or 30 of NGOs who have done their, uh, who have sent their input for the review process. It came in the shape of compilation through secretariat. It is part and parcel of the review process. It is not going anywhere. Last, I would just request that there should be no new interpretations. We strongly contest that. It's not a new review process. Whatever was to be done, it has been done in the working group. The working group has adopted a final report, and then it should be no new review. So we must restrict our comments to the outcome or the outcome of the working group. The review itself took place in the working group. There is no question about that. Second, let me also very strongly encourage everybody in this room to carefully study, not read, the working group reports of the countries that come in front of us in this moment and build their comments, their statements on the contents of this report. I would like to urge the speaker, the representative of the non-governmental organization that was taking, that had the floor, to mind these recommendations that I've made and to restrict his statement to these issues. You have the floor, sir. Um, let me just uh, uh, finally uh, ex express my deep uh, disappointment 